Our Father, we thank you for this time. We praise you for how you have blessed us in the workers' meeting. Thank you for how you've been speaking to our hearts from yesterday night. And Father, we pray that as we round up and end up this workers' meeting, that your blessing will still abide upon us in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that you'll keep on speaking your word to our hearts. Amen. And that all the strength, all the wisdom, all the grace you have passed on to us, will use everything to the glory of your name. Amen. So that as we go out now, and we minister to the needs of people around us, we pray that we'll bring many people to the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Open our eyes once again. Amen that we may see and behold wondrous things out of your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Isaiah chapter 60. I'm reading to you from verse 1. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. And the Gentiles shall come to thy light, and kings to the brightness of thy shining or rising. The children of Israel had for a long time been under affliction, under suffering. The reason is because they themselves had not remained in the place of glory that God had put them. Because of that, he had sent his prophets to them a number of times. And had told them of the affliction, of the punishment, of the chastisement, that will come upon them because of the evil of their ways. And the prophet from the beginning chapters of the book had been talking to them of the anger and the fury of God for them because of their wickedness. But in the latter part of the book, he started bringing words of comfort to the people because his prophecies made them sober, realizing how far they had gone from the presence of the Lord. In Isaiah chapter 40, from verse 1, Comfort ye, comfort ye my people, saith your God. Speak ye comfortably to Jerusalem. Cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished, that her iniquity is pardoned, for she has received of the Lord's hand double for her sins. It was in this condition of affliction, of torment, of chastisement, that they found themselves. So eventually, when God sent the word of comfort to them, they were slow in catching what the Lord was saying. Isaiah explained further to them, in chapter 59 from verse 1 behold the lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot save neither is ear heavy that it cannot hear but your iniquities have separated between you and your god and your sins have hid his face from you that he will not hear then he tabled before them the things they had done for your hands are defiled with blood and your fingers with iniquity. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have muttered perverseness. But here the prophet came to the nation, telling them that God will not be forever angry at them. That now the favor of God was available to them. And he was telling them that they should arise and shine. Because now, light from the Lord was come for them and the glory of the Lord was risen upon them in our own case there might have been many things that had weakened us discouraged us restrained us or perhaps tied us down 
that before you came for this workers retreat do you know that God has given you a ministry and he has given you an opportunity to minister in one way or the other in the church of the living God there might have been things that have surrounded you things coming perhaps from the devil that you can realize this is not of the work of the Lord this is coming from the enemy or perhaps there were things coming from human beings human beings that have been thoughtless human beings that have not been considerate enough and consciously or unconsciously they have done things that would discourage you and will not allow you to do things you ought to do or the things that have come upon you may not be directly coming from the devil it may not even be directly coming from the people that just deliberately want to injure you it might have been as a result of your own foolishness a result of your not following the way of the Lord properly and because of that you have been restricted you have been restrained and you have suffered some affliction but the Lord is saying he will not be angry forever whatever is the cause from the devil from people or from your own foolishness or your own error the Lord is saying now is the time for you to arise and shine we do not remain in the dust all our days we do not remain under defeat all our days there is a time that we have to pick up the encouragement from the Lord as he tells us and he says arise if he tells us to arise and he tells us that the glory of the Lord is now risen upon us and that light has come from him even though you have not seen it in the physical again you must remember we are not walking by sight we are walking by faith if you are hearing such a word from the Lord it must mean that a new day is beginning and it must mean that a new dispensation for you is beginning and God will do what he has purposed to do and nothing will stop him if he says the light has come and the glory has come before long you'll see the great manifestation of what God is talking about in Isaiah chapter 52 Isaiah chapter 52 from verse 1 awake awake put on thy strength O Zion put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem the holy city for henceforth there shall no more come into thee the uncircumcised and the unclean here the prophet spoke to the nation and he said now that the Lord has determined and decided to do you good you have a part to play you should not keep on sitting down in despair and covering yourself with a blanket of discouragement it is time for you now to throw away all the things that bind and to awake and to put on thy strength Christ is available for you the grace of God is available for you put on the whole armor of God that's your strength put on thy strength put on thy beautiful garments the garment of salvation forgiveness is available of the Lord pardon is available from the Lord and whatever it is you need it's available from the Lord put on thy beautiful garments O Jerusalem because God says from henceforth there shall no more come into thee the unclean and the uncircumcised maybe you've been bothered because of things that have entered into the family that have entered into your own life or entered into your place of work the things that have come and stolen away the joy that you used to have the Lord is promising that now that is commanding you to awake a new day will begin in verse 2 he says shake thyself from the dust after the Lord has loosed your bounds after the Lord has sent in the light after the Lord has beamed his glory upon you then it is for you to shake yourself away from the dust the Lord will not come and pull you from there he throws the cause of the promises of God to you there was a time that Jeremiah was in the dungeon and the princess went to Zedekiah and he said if we leave this man there there is no water there is no food that dry peach will just suffocate this man and he will die 
And the king said, Go and deliver him. But he didn't enter into that dungeon with him. What they told him is that they said, Jeremiah, we have come. Your deliverance has come. God has remembered you. We're going to throw the cords down to you. And you'll put these rocks as pads under your armpit. And then we'll pull you up with the cord, with the ropes. That's what the Lord is saying. He's saying you've been in the dungeon. And the devil had thought you'll die in the mire. You'll remain in that clay. And you'll remain in that place where you can be suffocated. No promise of God. No air, no spirit of God, and no word of God coming unto you. It appears that the discouragement and the despair will totally suffocate you and get rid of you. But now the Lord is saying, I'm throwing my cords of promises unto you. Put them underneath you and shake yourself from the dust. Arise, sit down, O Jerusalem. Loose thyself. From the bands of thy neck, O captive daughter of Zion. The Lord has come to deliver his own people. And he's telling his people, we now must arise and awake from the dust. Isaiah chapter 51, from verse 14. The captive exile hasteneth that he may be loosed, and that he should not die in the pit, nor that his bread should fail. That's exactly what I've told you that you've been thrown into that pit, it may be from your own negative thinking. It may be from what other people have done. They told some lies against you and they, they want, want some things around you that made you not to get into the pit. But the Lord is saying that you'll be loosed, you'll be delivered, so that you do not die in that pit. No child of God should remain in the pit of problems persecution, difficulty, sickness, or bondage. No child of God should remain where there is not enough bread, the bread of life, to sustain you and to make you the person you ought to be. Verse 15, But I am the Lord thy God that divided the sea, whose waves roared. The Lord of hosts is his name, and I have put my word in thy mouth. And I have covered thee in the shadow of my hand, that I may plant the heavens, and lay the foundation of the earth, and say unto Zion, Thou art my people. Maybe you've been thinking the Lord has rejected you, forsaken you, neglected you. He says, No. Now I've put my word in your mouth. As you go back this afternoon, you are going back with the word of God in your mouth. And you'll speak that word of God. The word of salvation to other people. And as you speak unto them, I believe they'll run, they'll come to the Lord. Amen. In Ephesians chapter 5, reading from verse 14. Ephesians 5, 14. Wherefore it says, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Awake. Awake yourself. Understand that no other person will come to wake you up. Don't remain in discouragement. Don't remain in your problem. The Lord is available for you. And his promises are ye and amen for you. And he says, Christ shall give thee light. See then that he walks circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. This afternoon, as we go back home, we're going to continue our evangelism. Our other brethren that are not in the workers' retreat will start at 3 o'clock. And um, we will take our meal before we go. And then we'll go back home to drop our loads. And at 5 o'clock, we'll all meet in the various zones and our locations. And we're going with the power of God. Amen. We're going with the knowledge of the mighty. Amen. When you pray for the sick, they will recover. Amen. When you give them words of salvation, they will yield their lives to the Lord. Do not allow anything to pull you back. You are not what you were before you came in here. God has touched you. God has taken away the problem. Bodies have been removed away from your life. Arise and shine. Let's rise up and pray.
shake yourself from the dust. Don't allow, in the don't allow the problem you brought in here to remain in your life. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. In Jesus' name, Amen. our Heavenly Father, we thank you very much for this wonderful time. We thank you very much for reviving us. We thank you very much for the words of encouragement you have given unto us. And we thank you because you have told us that we should arise and that we should shine and that our light has come. We bless your name and set our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Oh, Heavenly Father, as we shall be going back now, we are believing you, God, that, Lord, all the red sea that have been standing before us before, they are going to be parting in Jesus' name. Amen. All the discouragements that have been weighing us down over the weeks, over the months. We are believing you that as from now, they are going to vanish away from our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, all that you have uh, given unto us this weekend, by your grace and by your power, we are going to sh share with others. And Lord, our lives will influence them. And as we go back today, winning souls, we are believing God. That even those who have been hard-hearted before, those who have been having stony hearts before, today, you are going to break their stony hearts in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, all that we have been speaking to before and they have been making just of us, we are believing you, God, that all the words of Jericho in their lives, they are going to flood for flood today in Jesus' name. Amen. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you because today, thousands will be added into the kingdom in our various districts in Jesus' name. Amen. Even those of our brethren in other districts too, as they go out with us this evening, we are believing you for great things. We are believing you because those who have been living in darkness before, they are going to be translated into the kingdom of, our, of, of your dear son. And they are going to come into the light and we shall rejoice and we shall praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Father in heaven, all that you have shared with us from yesterday night till this time around, by your grace and by your power, we pray that the light that you have given unto us, we all put in the dark part of this world so that these uh, this dark areas of our districts will start to get lightened in Jesus' name. Amen. And we are praying, oh Lord God, that as we lay hands on the sick, by your grace and by your power, they are going to get healed in Jesus' name. As we lay our hands upon those who are blind, they are going to see in Jesus' name. As we lay our hands on those who are deaf, they are going to start hearing in Jesus' name. And as we speak to those who are physically dead, or even those who are dead in sins and trespasses, they are going to wake up, they are going to be quickened, and they are going to live to your glory in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, all that you have shared with us this weekend, we pray that, Lord, and all the blessings that you have put poured upon our life will be permanent blessings upon our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. And that, Lord, all of us will endure to your coming in Jesus' name. Amen. And also all those who are, you are going to give unto us from today until we have another privilege, if you tarry to come to such a program like this, they are going to abide in you in Jesus' name. Amen. We thank you for all that you have done for us. And we thank you very much for our pastor and all the seminarians you have used to minister to us. We are praying that you fill them more in Jesus' name. Jesus name Amen. so that Lord when they are called upon to speak for you again they will you be used more mightily than this in Jesus name Amen. especially Lord we commit our pastor unto you asking that Lord more of your unction more of your power more of your love we descend upon his life in Jesus name Amen. Father in heaven, that at every time and in every place, whether in this nation or outside this nation, whether in Africa or in other continents of the world, as it stands to minister, that your word will be mighty, your word will be powerful, and will be quick to heal, to save, to deliver, and to bring joy and peace to other lives in Jesus' name. We thank you for having answered us. We bless your name, O Lord God, for all that you have done for us this weekend. Receive all the praises and all the honor and all the adoration as we are prayed in Jesus. I'm so excited today because God has been so faithful to me. I'm going to keep this very short. First of all, I want to thank God for the church. The church has been my family. Um, thank you so much, Pastor Dada. He has been a father to me. I don't start crying. Okay, um, I remember I came here without um, scholarship to Harvard University. The first year wasn't easy, but I got a grant that paid half of my tuition. But then from second year, I got like five different scholarships from my department. I just thank God. Third year, the same thing. And I thank God because.
because I'll be graduating in May. I didn't have to stay out of the room. I just stayed out for all physical conditions. I just left the room of the 